Welcome to my channel, Outside the Levees. I'm Jared Serenay, and today I'm duck hunting with my buddies Tony Taylor and Goat Vero. We'll also be hanging out, cooking, and spending some quality time at Tony's Camp in the Marsh. Let's get it started. Bob, body fly. All right, man, y'all are in for a treat. We are headed to probably one of my favorite places on the planet. My buddy Tony Taylor's camp, literally in the middle of nowhere, barely get cell phone service, tucked into a nice cool little island with some oak trees. I can't wait, honestly. This is awesome. We're gonna go make some duck hunts, hang out at the camp. I hope I can do this place justice, honestly. It's that cool, like, it's hard to even explain. I'm telling y'all, it's, it's an awesome place. We got big Steve here. Hey, how's it going? Check out this boat, y'all. Look at this. Look at that. You can live on this thing. <laughs> like, it could be what? 30, 40 degrees outside. You ain't feeling nothing in this thing, huh? Back curtain in, man. It's warm and cold. Zip it up and you can't. All right, well, we're going to get in the boat. We got a nice long ride ahead of us, but it'll be worth it. Trust me. See y'all soon. All right, here we are. It's about a 22 mile boat ride, they said. Tony's little Chenier Island. We're gonna go check it out. We gotta unload these boats first, get everything in. You know, when you got a place like this, in the middle of nowhere, you gotta boat everything in. We got some goodies with us, so we're gonna get them inside. All right, we're gonna go cut some brush before we settle in for the evening, start eating dinner and stuff. You know, these late season ducks, you gotta brush up real good. Look how cool this is walking through here. Like something out of, something out of the Hobbit or something. Look at your eagles. Juvenile eagle, huh? Look, look at them, they're all over the place. Wow. They're roosting these trees. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at them. J.R.R. Tolkien wrote about this place. Cool. Here's what we're gonna use for the duck blind. This stuff is real sturdy. Good stuff. Got a little gumbo going in here. What you got in there? Three different type of sausages. A couple of chicken thighs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Gonna let it cook down for about an hour, take the bones out the chicken, and uh, we'll see. This is Steve's camp. Steve is Tony's neighbor over here on, what y'all call this little island? Y'all got a name for the island? Man, we got many different names, but uh, we always say Karen Crow Island, you know. And... I'll be honest, I probably shouldn't put this on the internet, because once the wives see how nice this place is, you might not be able to sneak out. No, yeah, no, I don't know. Like, you tell your wife I'm going to the camp, she's like, oh, nasty camp, sleeping in bunk beds together, it's dirty. I don't know. This place is pretty pimp if you ask me. What? When the gumbo was ready, we filled our bellies up, solved the problems of the world, and came up with a game plan for the next morning's hunt. What's up, man? <laughs> going to shoot some ducks. Be ready, bro. Look at <laughs> All right, I'm gonna let y'all on to a little something. Now the end of our duck season here coincides with Mardi Gras season. So, you bring a king cake to camp, okay? Make your coffee in the morning. But here's the ticket. You gotta stick it in the microwave, okay? Now you don't wanna overdo it. Don't get too crazy with it. Let's go with 12 seconds. On the money right there. Oh, just a little bit soft and gooey. Mm-hmm. Take a nice big sip of coffee. That's your breakfast right there. Your pre-breakfast breakfast, actually. Ha, ha, ha. 
All right, it's nine o'clock. We've been here since shooting light and uh, not much, you know. I think we had three single gray ducks come in. We shot all three of those. And then we had a group of dogri or scalp come in. We knocked three down, but there was one we just never could get to. He kept swimming off. Fairly slow day, you know. It, there's still potential for it to pick up here around nine o'clock and just get a late morning flight. It's a beautiful bluebird, nice and windy. And the company is good. And guess what? If at the worst, we got one of the finest camps in the world to go back to. You wanna try and let him get in front? y'all see that holy cow <laughs> watch this Lethargic alligators are in the cold. I mean, he's barely even moving. You know, on a warmer day, an alligator that size, they don't want to be anywhere near a boat like this. They're, hey, and that's not a small alligator by any means. I'm gonna say he's at least, he's, a, he's probably a 10 footer. He might be a smaller 10, but gosh. Ugh. On the way in, we saw another big alligator. We got back to the camp and warmed up. Breakfast tacos were in order, as well as a post on siesta. When everyone got up and going, it was time to start cooking dinner. Well, we're gonna, uh, we're gonna make a camp dish. Uh, we're gonna take what we got, which is some onions, some Veron supermarket smoked sausage. And uh, The man owns the place that makes the sausage, so. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna take some potatoes we've been having here for a few days. And we're gonna just smother them down, basically. Saute the onions. A little saute the sausage and smother the, uh, the potatoes. So in South Louisiana, we have a way of giving just about everybody a nickname. There's, you know, folks who grew up with somebody their whole lives and only know them by their nickname so much so that if you say, hey, do you know John? And they'll be like, well, who's John? But if you say the nickname, they're like, oh yeah, I know him. So we have to hear about how Goat got his nickname. Uh, when I was a young, young little boy, my uh, mother's from uh, back of Grand Point, as we call it little farming community in St. James Parish, they used to have their vegetables uh, every spring and fall, and they'd bring them home, and I was the one of the siblings who would always eat everything. My father said that goats eat everything, and we're gonna nickname you goat, and I was about six, seven years old. All right, Jared, now we're gonna saute these potatoes a little bit in there with the onions and sa sausage. Uh, I'm gonna saute them around a little bit, a little bit, a little while, and I'm gonna add a little bit of water at the end, right before I, uh, after I saute them a little bit, and I'm gonna put this. Uh, excuse me. I bought a brand new lid for Tony. <laughs> Tony, I bought him a brand new lid. It looked like a pot, a pan, but it's a lid, and we're gonna cover it and saute it for about an hour. We're gonna salt and pepper, all occasion seasoning, whatever we have. Been cooking about uh, about uh, 30 minutes, so we're gonna let it cook down a little bit more and soften up and kind of let it blend a little bit better. Uh, we'll taste it for some little salt and pepper, and it's gonna be a go. While we didn't shoot many ducks that day, we surely weren't gonna go hungry. These big dinners are one of the reasons I always love coming back to Tony's camp. You know, there was a time when I'd go to camp and 
It'd be nothing to stay up, cutting up, having fun till one, two in the morning, and then wake up four or five in the morning and go on a hunt. I don't think I'm there anymore. And I say that because here's the current situation I am in. I've made it. This is it. This is where I was always trying to get. For some folks, it's a private jet, a mansion, a place in the Keys. For me, it's laying down on a couch at a hunting camp in the middle of nowhere in South Louisiana with two labs on top of me. I'm a simple man. Just is what it is. Are we gonna get up again tomorrow, go give the ducks another shot? So me and these dogs here are gonna get some shut eye and we'll see y'all in the morning, all right? He knows, he knows the end of the story. So it's all Jay Forrest's fault, first off. Just want, just want to get that, get that clear right off the bat. <laughs> Jay Forrest, F-O-R-R-E-S-T. <laughs> P.O. <P> box. <laughs> anyway, as the story goes, you always, you always in a little hurry when you get to the landing. Jay backs it down and I pull over to the side. He gets out to help me unload something. We're kind of a, kind of, the truck was kind of blind far from where the boat was. <laughs> And uh, the next morning, I'm, I'm here at the here in the blind, this very famous spot. Two weeks, two weeks ago, I get a text that says, uh, "Tony, is this your truck?" And I looked at Jay and said, "Jay, you parked my truck." <laughs> Jay gave me a look like, <laughs> I'm, 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 "I'm not sure." <laughs> the pictures of my truck and back down in the ramp still, with the door open, the radio blaring. <laughs> And I get to see the picture the next morning, but apparently it stayed there running for about an hour before the, the kind folks at Bayou Black Marina decided to go ahead and move it and park it and hide the keys for me. They told that story on Thursday night. We have been laughing about it for two days now. Goat, whenever he like needs a little pick me up, he just pulls up the picture of that truck sitting in the ramp and looks at it. He said he's gonna frame it and put it in his house whenever he's kind of depressed or down. He's just gonna go look at that picture. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this year's trip to Tony Taylor's camp. You know, something I love to kind of check off the list each year of hunting season. Haven't been able to do it in a couple years. So, you know, after a really kind of crazy year, getting to come and hang with Tony and come here to this special place was something good to, to do. If you haven't already, please subscribe and we'll see y'all soon.